guys, Tarek Merface, and welcome to another uh, tutorial on how to choose Navigraph charts, which is to say the Jefferson charts. Today we're going to continue with Glasgow and we're looking at the taxi charts. So we're going to be going through these, all of them, because unlike the approach of the stars, they're not all separate ones, they all give you different bits of information which you do need to have a look at. So first off, the airport briefing, there will be three of them. Uh, depending on how much information you have. So for bigger airports, you may have more that fall within the same category. So first off, gen generic airport information. If you look at the top, you see that uh, typical header with the airport briefing. General, which gives you general information about operating in and around the airport. Uh, usually it will be on the ground um, in terms of once you're in, on the airport, what services you have avail available or what taxi or parking limitations you have uh, and so forth. So for example, here it says uh, the use of reverse thrust should be avoided when possible and so forth. So, and other warnings, for example, bread in the vicinity, which you're gonna see pretty much in every airport brief in the UK. So next part, arrival. So if you're gonna be arriving into Glasgow, you read this before you go. And very important, the noise abatement procedure, very, very crucial, give you more information. We did have a glimpse of it last time, but there you go. So you read that as well. And then the runway operations, any specific things you need to watch out for. So always read these. Next, you've got the departure briefing. So make sure you know whether you need a clearance to start and start up and push back, which is the majority of larger airports. Noise abatement procedure during the departure, runway operations, and etc etc so we're not gonna spend too much time on these yeah because they're it's just text so we just have to read airport information so in some some uh charts for smaller airports this and the next one to nine and nine alpha as you see here will be together and sometimes even nine bravo will be together yeah so we don't need to worry so much about it for glasgow we're gonna have the three and just a quick thing, I'm going to show you a slight difference on the 9, which is this part here. You see, you got the ICAO and the IATA, but here, instead of giving you the airport name, what you can have instead is position information, the runway, the airport elevation, and the coordinates. Okay, so we go back to this, and this is pretty standard. The coordinates uh, above and, and to the left, and, and you can see them on both sides. Here you've got a scale, which is very useful, for instance, if you're departing from intersections and there are no cleared distances, or sorry, declared distances for departures from those intersections. Note that some operators make it a requirement to depart from an intersection where there is a declared distance, uh, takeoff run or takeoff uh, distance available. So, or landing distance available, whatever it is. Uh, when I used to operate in Glasgow, we would depart from Charlie, but we were using single engine aircraft. So uh, I did measure it and it turned out to be like 1,200 meters, which is three times as much as we needed. Uh, these hotspots, which you can see here in the legend, hotspots, and there are two of them here. So a Gulf and Alpha, and you read the information. And these are typically hotspots during low, low visibility procedures when you got Cat 2 and Cat 3. If you look here, you see a dotted line, which is basically saying on the side for detail C9B. So if you were to go to 9B, you got that square right there. Okay, so it's just more details about the parking available to the big airplanes. They don't care as much about the GA aircraft, so they didn't put anything in there, which, okay, whatever. Uh, here you've got the variation. So three degree west variation. So that'll be the difference between magnetic and true north. And that's about it in terms of the other stuff is just legends. So you've got the taxiways, the holding points, the type of lighting here, the which is a high intensity approach lighting system. I think it's for cat two approaches, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, here you've got the the wind socks or where the wind socks are. Um, I am not sure what this is, so I'll have to check the glossary and find out what this symbol means. And uh, then you've got navays, which are usually denoted by a circle with this black dot in the middle and a name, so the VOR and the locator. Where the control tower is, they'll always tell you that. A runway length, both in feet and meters, always, because they're responsible that way. And the elevation of the runway thresholds. So yes, yeah, so you can see that runway 23, the elevation is actually 18 feet, not 26. And the runway heading, magnetic heading, yeah, 230 degrees. Because remember, sometimes this one's beautifully exactly the same, but sometimes 
it'll be off by quite a bit. So that's it. And this is quite good actually. It shows you the stopway and how the length of the stopway, which is right here. Speaking of runway lengths, we then go to 9A, which gives us information about runway lengths. Oh, one more thing, sorry. It's got the main frequencies you're gonna use on departure, which is right there. So, as I said before, sometimes for smaller airports, this chart and this chart are combined. This information would go at the bottom right above the takeoff minima. So, additional runway information. So for instance, if you look at runway 25 and 23 here, as you can see, it's for both. You've got high intensity runway edge lighting system, center line lighting, which is 15 meters apart for each light, high intensity approach lighting systems for category two approach, uh, touchdown zone lighting, and pathies on the left hand side for three degree approach, and then the RVR minimums, etc. Then you've got the thresh the landing, the usable landing links, so threshold and the glide slope and so forth, and then the width of the runways. And the takeoff minimum, which you see is just two, sorry, takeoff runway available. So take off run available from runway head, from taxiway, Foxtrot, Echo, and Delta, but not from Charlie, which is where we are, or Yankee. Yeah, so, and there you go as well. So these are the declared distances. So you can take off from any of these interceptions with pretty much all the uh, the carriers, as long as it's, of course, within your, uh, your acceptable uh, performance limits. And then here you've got the takeoff minima. So same sort of deal where you got an extra asterisks here. So you're getting quite used to the format of Jeppesen by now, yeah, which is all very similar all the time, even if the charts at first glance look drastically different. The parkings, so the parking stands, so this is great for people using INS or IRS and not GPS, so they need to input their position into the aircraft's uh, FMS. So yeah, so each line represents the coordinates that you need. So 1, 1A one will be here, 2 through 5 will be there, 6 through 11 will be here, 12 and so forth and so forth. So you find your parking there and you put in the coordinates that is listed. LVP procedures, low visibility procedures, in case of low visibility, they'll tell you when LVPs are in place, which is usually via ATC or ATIS or both, and then they will tell you what the LVPs are. Finally, this is for helicopters, so it says here JAA copter minimums which is out of date because we're now at YASA. However, if you look here, you can see that the that the effective date was 2009, which is in January 2009, which is not long before YASA came into force uh, or it became a prominent uh, agency in Europe. So it just means that the minimums haven't been changed or Jeppesen ad or Navigraph haven't updated this yet because the numbers will be the same, uh, just the text will be slightly different. So there you go. So this is a relatively short video on the taxi chart. So we went through all of these and it took less time because it's pretty self-explanatory. Yeah? It's pretty easy to understand. So let's call it a day then. If you liked it, please share, subscribe, and comment, especially if you have a question, which I'll be happy to answer. I do read all comments, even if I don't always answer to them. Um, and if you have a question, I'll answer it, either by responding or, if I think it warrants it, a video. So, thanks for watching. I'm Tarek Merface. I'll see you guys next time, and happy flying.